Hey everybody, uh, welcome to uh, our very first ever um, livestock photography uh, chat here. Um, we have a special guest with us from tonight who's actually responsible uh, for uh, Learn Livestock Photography coming to fruition. And so I'd like to welcome Becky Lundy from Gladmar, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada to join us uh, here this evening. Well, Becky, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Oh, for sure, my pleasure. <laughs> did you know? Did you know that you're the reason uh, Learn Livestock Photography exists? Um, I think after I watched that one Facebook Live and you were talking about me, and I was, I was a little embarrassed at first. But I thought, well, nobody knows me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah. So the. The the story is that I thought that this would be a good idea one time and over I had a big break and I put together a website for it and I thought it was private. Um, I didn't think it was published and a, I want to say there was like a, a couple hundred people submitted information requests for that website. And Becky was one of them. She was kind of persistent uh, <laughs> that she'd check up every six months or a year and say like, hey, are you doing this? Are you actually doing this thing? And so um, you motivated me to actually get this done. And I just want to thank you for that because it, it really wouldn't be here if it weren't for people who asked me to do it. And so thank you for that. Oh, that's yeah, that's kind of neat. I, either motivation or nagging, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 just motivation, not nagging whatsoever, <laughs> not not even a little bit. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you do and um, your operation um, and what you guys have going on. We just have a small cattle herd, about 100 mother cows, and um, just cow-calf operation, and uh, we do retain our own heifers, keep building the cow herd or keep it at what numbers we, we want. Um, I work at our local school as a substitute EA in my spare time. And, um, and my husband runs a uh, grader for the RM. So it's always busy. <laughs> you guys always have something going on, don't you? Yeah. Um, the, uh, your cattle herd is a purebred herd, a commercial herd. Yeah, commercial. Yeah. Yep. Angus, yep. Angus Hereford Cross, red okay. and black Angus. Yep. Very cool. And the, and so, um, where did where did did you guys? How did you guys get started? Are you a first generation operation, or you kind of had a family farm there, or? We, we live on my husband's yeah, family farm. His grandfather came from Norway in the early 1900s and homesteaded here. And then uh, after Lars and I got married, we lived at a few different ranches working and had the opportunity to move home. And we did. So kind of put awesome. the Greenland back to grass and got some cows, <laughs> had some kids. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So where does photography fit in the mix for you? What made you interested in photography? How did you get started? Um, I guess I just always liked having a camera and taking pictures of whatever I thought was interesting to me. And then somewhere along the line, I thought, you know, livestock photography would be kind of neat to get into. Um, and there was like no resources. <laughs> like I... I did some other photography courses like through community college and um, New York school of photography. I did like a, and that really helped me, but it didn't pertain to livestock photography or what I was looking for. Um, and I bought an old book off of eBay by Daryl Dickinson, I think. And, and it has a little bit of information about livestock photography. So I kind of read that and still searched the internet for, you know, courses or, or workshops, but um, mm -hmm. never really found anything in Canada anyway. Right, right. And so what, how to, um, so you started off just enjoying taking pictures. You saw livestock photography as a possible opportunity. What was yeah. it like for you to 
go out there and give it a shot the first few times? Um, we're probably just practicing on our own cows and, um, yeah, probably just never kind of got the results I, I wanted. And then a friend a few years ago asked me to picture some of his sale bulls. Then there was only three bulls. So I thought, okay, I can handle this. And from what I had read in the, my book that I got, they turned out okay. And um, people asked, said, hey, those bull pictures look really good. Who <laughs> did you get to do your pictures? But um, yeah, so that's just kind of how it started. And then another friend asked me to picture some bulls and and heifers and then 4-H calves and stuff like that. So a little bit like that through the year kind of keeps me happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's the way a lot of uh, a lot of people ask about, you know, getting started in the business of photography and how could they do more. And I think that that what you said about like just getting the opportunity or taking the opportunity to do it, mm -hmm. you created an opportunity first, then practiced on your own, and then you got the opportunity to work with someone local, and then all of a sudden people start asking, "Hey, where'd you get that done?" And, they say, oh, call Becky. She can take care of it. I mean, that's literally word of mouth is huge in in generating photography work. Yeah. And I actually just reached out to a Facebook friend. They raised Black Angus. And I said, hey, like, I'm looking to get experience in the picture pen. And if you ever want help, like, moving bulls or getting ears, like, I would sure be interested to come just work for the experience and, and get practice picturing and she messaged me back and said yeah like in March they want to do some heifer pictures so so hopefully it works out and yeah so perfect it, that's it, great it, it, yeah what um um what was the so you talked a little bit about searching for information that that was kind of the the learning process before you found the complete guide to cattle and livestock photography, right? Is just what what was that like for you? The process of learning before you were in our course. There wasn't really anything like that I could find, you know, like it's, that pertain to livestock photography. Like I know in some of the, um, I'd find like workshops that were maybe in the states, like Christy Collins had one, one I think at a at a university somewhere for like kind of students or whatever that was worked into a marketing seminar or something like that. And those are about the only ones I could find. Like, and I never really tried reaching out to anyone in like any uh, livestock photographers in Canada. Like there wasn't really any schools or courses or anything that I could find. So. Did yeah. you, have you had um, any experience like, trying to connect with livestock photographers and, and get information from them? I no, I did not try that. <laughs> yeah. I think I probably was too, you know, intimidated or whatever. Or, I agree with that. Or, or not know how to reach out. Yeah. When I was starting, I was super into like, it, if I even got to see one of those people, I was like, Hi, yeah. I'm so nice to meet you, <laughs> uh, but I didn't have any guts to actually ask them a question. And yeah. um, and I don't know that a lot of them would have shared any information with me if I had asked the question. Yeah, um, I think that's, yeah, would be true. <laughs> <laughs> the um, So then when you got into the Complete Guide to Cattle and Livestock Photography, how has that changed things? for you in terms of your ability to gather information and learn and and practice yeah no it was a big like what a resource honestly like um yeah i don't know where to i mean all the information i think anybody could ask for or look for and learn from like honestly like it, it's been really good and it's a resource that you kind of always have and you know you can watch through and usually in the winter, I do watch through parts of it again, just to kind of, you know, keep things fresh in my mind of, you know, what you should be doing in the picture pen and, you know, camera settings and, you know, kind of all that stuff. I've been kind of, you know, just going through that to keep it kind of fresh until I can get out and practice, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you find yourself ever like working on a specific problem and saying, okay, I'm going to go back to this video and rewatch that. 
part maybe it's editing or whatever um yeah mostly i think um probably the, like the, in the picture pen and those ones i think and maybe the editing editing and lighting ones kind of those ones i think are kind of the only, always the ones i go back to yeah 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 do um what the first time through were there any big takeaways that or light bulb moments so to speak anything that really stood out to you probably everything <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Um, oh boy. Yeah, everything because I had like no resources, you know? Yeah. But um, I think probably learning about the lighting and like working the line, that part mm -hmm. of it, and where to focus your camera and, you know, um, yeah. There's a lot to learn. About yes. Your craft, right? Yeah, there is. You've, but no, you've got the light bulb moment. <laughs> the, the camera part right and yeah. then and and some people come to this this uh with a fair amount of camera knowledge and they feel comfortable with that and some people are just starting with cameras and they don't know I, a lot of producers and ranchers you know they know raising cattle they don't know how to work a camera and mm -hmm. but they recognize hey this is an opportunity for us to either hey we only have a few to do or we can save some money by get by taking them ourselves. And so they have to start from zero. And I think that people come to this from both sides of that equation. So you got your camera and then the animals, people come to this from both sides of that equation too. Tons of animal experience, tons of picture pen experience, or maybe none at all. Yeah. And I think that, I, I mean, I think that we tried to assemble it in a way where whether you came with the knowledge or not, that maybe you could speed through some parts if you knew it already. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, the course speaks to every level of experience. Do you agree with that or? Oh yeah, I think so. Because like, and we're in an area like where there's lots of breeders and they do try to picture on their own and some have gotten, you know, okay at it. And some it's like, Oh, please let me come take your pictures or let me help you. Yeah. <laughs> like I have this great resource. This would help you tons, like, you know. <laughs> so um yeah. Yeah. Do you um I know you're in our our um you're into cattle, um, but do you based on your experience, do you think the information is helpful for other species of livestock and horses too? Yeah, I would think so because all the principles of lighting are the same, right? Like for right. every species. Yeah. And if you know your animals, yeah, I think that it applies to everything. Yeah. Do, um, um, how would you describe the Facebook group? I think that's becoming quite a community of people. Oh, yeah, it's great. Hey, because you can pop in there whenever and ask questions or, you know, people put something in and it starts, a, you know, a spark and people ask questions and put info in and yeah, it, it's been really good. And that the live, the live ones that we used to have uh, that first year, boy, those were so much fun. Hey, eh? and like so much information. It was so good. Yeah. Great. Do um, I know that you've leaned on me a couple times too for a challenge, whether it was in the group or in email. I, can you give people an idea of like, how available do I make myself to help? Oh, very available. I would probably for your schedule and what you can, you know, and I always feel like, oh, I shouldn't bug him, but, <laughs> but it's good to bounce, have a sounding board and bounce things off of, you know. Yeah. I just love, you know, we have over 300 students around the world now. We have, um, in our courses, we have uh, almost 200 people in the Facebook group. It'll probably pass 200 here this week. And, like, I just, I'm so proud of how this work is influencing people and their cattle operations and their side businesses and everything else that I can't not answer. 
right? <laughs> if, if somebody has a question, I, I feel, um, now I, I try to get to most of them in a day or two and sometimes yeah. I miss something, but the, the, uh, I, I just love helping. I think that, that I enjoy answering those questions. So I'm glad you feel like that's working for you too. Oh, for sure. Who, you know, a lot of people in the cattle business, the livestock business, uh, uh, you're very familiar with the industry. Who would you recommend go through the course? Who do you think it, who do you think it fits best? I think anyone wanting to, you know, get better at picturing their livestock, you know, if, if they're a producer with a good camera and lens, you know, I think it would be easy enough for them to learn. And, and even uh, kind of some of the, I don't know if I want to call them mid-level professionals, I, you know, um, I think it would be beneficial to anybody, honestly, like it would take your photography to the next level or probably improve some areas of it like for yeah. sure but i think it's easy enough to understand and the course is awesome to go through so yeah, yeah. i appreciate i appreciate that <laughs> a lot what uh everybody always wants to talk about gear what gear are you shooting on these days um i have a canon 6d a full frame and then i did buy a 70 to 200 uh, two eight. <laughs> nice. So, awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. it's uh exciting to take the first set of pictures with that, isn't it? Yeah. So I hope to be able to do more. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I'm so glad you got to do that. Do you, um um what what do you what's your next photography goal? Where where do you see yourself on your journey as a photographer in, in terms of your learning level and, and where do you hope to go next? Um, you know, I, I kind of am okay where I am right now, like just, you know, doing 4-H pictures, like 4-H animals for the kids or the odd, you know, bull pictures or, I, I don't know yet that if I feel confident or ready enough to go in and picture like say 50 bulls in a day or something like that, or whatever, 20 bulls and video because they all need video. And I think, um, you know, I wouldn't mind trying that once, you know, but, but I just am more comfortable if it's like, okay, like five animals to picture today or, or one or three steers or something like that. But, but um, um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's not like I can go out and hit the road. So I think just smaller local stuff I'm kind of happy with. Yeah. You're doing And that yeah. makes a, a good opportunity to fit for you. And somebody else may say, hey, I want to do 100 bulls. Yeah. <laughs> they could learn. They they could learn how to do that too, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a hard industry to break into. And unless you're working for, you know, show champions or working for a big photographer, it's hard to get producers to, I, I guess, invest in it. And really they should because it would improve their pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I really am appreciative of your time today. Uh, thank you for visiting with us. And I, I hope that you guys close out winter in good fashion up there. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to be uh, able to join you. All right. Thanks, Becky. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.